how are you? I hope you're good. Today I'm here with the third video in this me recommending books according to Hogwarts House series. Um, I will link the first for the Gryffindor and the second for Hufflepuff videos down below. I have already posted them. If you haven't seen them, maybe you want to check them out. Um, but today we are celebrating the House of Ravenclaw. And the trains that I sort of went for were obviously intelligence, wit, creativity, resilience and also being part of a fandom. I think the people of Ravenclaw House, when they like something, they like something. <laughs> they will go above and beyond to research everything about it, including fandoms. They will be killers at like pub quizzes on a particular fandom if they are a fan of it. And I think they are prone to being in fandoms. This is what I think, but let me know if you agree with me, but I also included that as a trade because I think there's a reason why there's so many Ravenclaws here. Obviously we're talking about books and um, Ravenclaws stereotypically like to read, but also I feel like there's a lot of readers who wouldn't bother creating a platform for it. And I think, again, when Ravenclaws like something, they like it and they do a lot about it. So again, I have eight book recommendations, not necessarily for those who are in the Ravenclaw house, but just in general books that I thought personally, I thought that they fit in into the Ravenclaw vibe. And if you're looking for something similar and you're in the mood for something similar, maybe those are books that you want to pick up. There's a lot of the Actually, quite a few of all-time favorites are in this one, so I'm very excited to talk about them. But very quickly before we get into that, I want to speak about today's sponsor, who is Skillshare once again. Uh, you guys probably have heard me talk about it before, but because obviously Ravenclaw is a house that wants to learn constantly and improve upon themselves, I thought it would be very fitting to include that in here, because Skillshare is an online learning platform with over 25,000 classes and courses on literally everything. Uh, if you're looking for something on design, entrepreneurship, business, time management, lettering, bullet journaling, writing, basically you name it, there's probably something on there. But I wanted to remind again that the Bata here class on writing is still there, so just saying. Skillshare is also affordable with under $10 per month on an annual subscription basis and premium membership gives you absolute access to everything. But if you just wanted to check that out and see if you like it, if it's something that you would enjoy, I have a link down below in the description bar that gives you two months free access to the premium membership so you can check everything out and see if you want to stick around. And if you don't, then you have those two months for free. Because two months is a long time, so I think it's a really good deal and I would definitely recommend you take advantage of that. Thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring another video. Any support on this channel I really, really appreciate. And thank you guys for being so cool with me doing the Skillshare sponsorships. You guys are so, so supportive and it means a lot to me. So now in no particular order, I'm just gonna go and talk about the books. The very first one is Ready Player One. And this is, I feel like, where the fandom trait comes in. This is about a virtual reality where there's a competition that if people solve these puzzles, um, they can inherit this whole virtual reality system, which is basically like a lot of money. <laughs> you would be set for life. Your kids would be set for life. It's like, it's a lot. And we have our main character that goes on to this and, uh, is amongst one of the people who really can pick up upon clues. So obviously that's already very Raven Chloe, but um, the amount of knowledge this person holds on history of gaming and history of anything computer related is insane. I think people who grew up in 80s, 90s, I think they would enjoy this a lot. If you are quite younger, you might not pick up on a lot of references here, but um, there's also a movie now, so. That, that's great as well. I actually enjoyed it. I know people, I know some people didn't love it as much because it does deviate from the book quite a bit, but I really enjoyed it. And I would especially recommend the audiobook for this because the text can be quite dense. There's not that much dialogue and stuff, so it could really help out if you're struggling with it, but um, I really enjoyed it. I would also just quickly like to apologize for Warner Bros making these in incorrect colors. I understand Ravenclaw suffered this a lot. <laughs> Um, but this is obviously based on the movies and in the books. We both know that it's bronze and blue, but I tried to make up with the eye makeup for that, so... <sighs> Struggles. Okay, next up is my all-time favorite book, 
Any guesses? <laughs> it's The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. The Name of the Wind is what I consider to be a adult version of Harry Potter. You know, what else can I say? Do I need to say anything else? Um, I, I understand a lot of people not liking this. It's not the fastest of books and at the beginning I DNF'd it at like 50 pages but I was in a massive slump. But this book is the book that took me out of a five-year-old slump. So it definitely made me want to read more. It engrossed me so much into the world. The main character I feel like is very Raven Chloe that is just like because this is him telling his story, he just portrays himself as overly perfect. And in the nicest of ways, I think it's a little bit of a Ravenclaw trait. Um, I'm thinking Gilderoy kind of vibe. <laughs> and I absolutely loved it. His wit in this book as well. He's so sassy. I just, I love it so, so much. Instead of a magic school, there is a magic university type of thing. So I am very, very due a reread because it's been years since I read this so I'm hoping to reread it this year as well and like give you my refreshed thoughts. Next one is Scythe by Neil Schusterman. I loved the second book in this one. The first one was kind of like okay so happy I continued because the second book is amazing <laughs> I thought but Scythe is about a world that is absolutely perfect but it's perfect to an extent that there's no death anymore because people have learned to go around it basically but the population still needs to be controlled in one way or another so instead of natural death we now have sites who are basically people who kind of kill people but it's called gleaning um and to become one you are select and you basically then have like an apprenticeship and there's two characters here that are competing for a spot first of all i thought it was very creative the whole concept of the book and creativity is Ravenclaw's trait. But one of the main characters, Citra here, I thought she was like Ravenclaw incarnate. <laughs> um, she's very logical, she's very philosophical, she will do what she thinks is truly best, not necessarily for her or for other people, but just like in general, do you know what I mean? Um, I definitely recommend this one if you're looking for like a good Ravenclaw character. Next up is The Raven Cycle, the whole the whole series by Maggie Stewater. And this is a paranormal um, fantasy series that is all about this friend group searching for a sleeping king that would then sort of grant a wish. There are psychics, there are supernatural things in here that are explored, but it's all set in... Uh, our world so it's urban fantasy but with like paranormal twists i mean raven is already in the title i know on the emblem is the eagle but raven claw still get it but that's just a happy coincidence really i just selected this because because i think that raven claws would be open-minded enough to explore paranormal things because it would be too curious not to do you know what I mean? So things like tarot readings or psychics or uh, ley lines, they would be all for researching them because what if, you know? What if? Next one is Ink and this book is by Alice Broadway and it's here because I also think it's pretty creative. First of all, we're always here for this beautiful foiled cover. But Ink is about a world where your body gets tattooed with your life events and your body is a book that showcases your life and your choices and if you made questionable choices everyone can see that because it's written on you so all of your shameful embarrassing moments that you want to just forget and forgive kind of thing they're on you you can everyone for everyone to see and it's terrifying but um and even more terrifying i think is the fact that you're then made into some sort of book because they skin you you know? And the main character's father is actually accused of something awful and executed, if I remember correctly. It's been a couple of years now since I read this. But she is suspecting something really shifty going on and she wants to actually get to the bottom of it because she doesn't trust the government. So I think it's a very creative world, but also there's like everything's on tattoo and the tattoo art and how they are done and how what they represent. That this would really be a good fit for a Ravenclaw category. Next up, there is Sleeping Giants, another series that is one of my absolute favorites of all time. Without saying too much, this is about a crew, a secret type of crew of people who are investigating these 
massive metal parts of what looks like a giant test. But the thing about these parts is that it's made of metal that first does not really conform to any of the physical substitutes of our knowledge and two, predates Earth. <laughs> And it's just so full of exploration and and characters that are so smart and well-developed. I absolutely loved it. And it is told in a really cool way of interviews. The whole book is interviews. You can fly through them. Audiobooks are phenomenal. Uh, physical books are phenomenal. Everything is phenomenal. Read it, please. Like, it's so, so good. I really think that curious minds such as... Ravenclaw ones would really appreciate this one because it always like what is it like what's gonna happen next like there's always this drive of wanting to know more and wanting to figure stuff out highly recommend next up is one that I think I would be kidding myself if I was not including it in here and that is Sherlock Holmes this is a massive tome ow <laughs> this is a massive tome in my native language that is just full of wit full of mysteries I feel like I really don't need to tell you what Sherlock Holmes is about, so I'm not gonna. Any story I feel is filled with this witty humor. There's obviously also things to solve, so I think this is Ravenclaw in a nutshell. And the last book is Stalking Jack the Ripper. This is very similarly um, a sort of like a mystery thing with a pinch of romance, a pinch of adventure, but eh, not so much. <laughs> But this is about a girl who is trying to solve the mystery of uh, Jack the Ripper, serial killer. And she is also a girl that goes against the norm in, at that age because girls were sort of frowned upon and would rarely be sent to a university level or would be allowed to, you know, examine corpses and whatnot. But she is persistent that she wants to do that. And it's about her trying to solve the, the mystery of who is the serial killer. And I feel like that one also fits. And that is everything for this particular video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know as always down below what you think would be a, like a really, really good Ravenclaw read. If you agree with me on any of these books, if you have read any. I hope my friend Ravenclaws don't think I did them dirty with the video. Um, thank you so, so much for watching. There's only one left now. I think I feel, I feel like I'm gonna be sad when this ends. Is there anything else housewise that you guys would like me to do? Because that would be fun. I, I know, I know, I know, I know I need to do that makeup thingy. Well, at some point, I'm just really not into makeup videos for a while now, so <laughs> that is why. Um, but yeah, is there anything else you would see me doing housewise? Because that would be pretty fun. But Slytherin is to come. I hope you enjoyed this one. Stay awesome, stay kind, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!